What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am so glad to have you here. It has been a while since I've done any kind of impression videos on some of the games that I'm playing on the Nintendo Switch. So in today's video, I'm going to bring you three games and give you my impressions on those games. And you can buy these games right now on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Those three games are Commander Keen and Keen Dreams, Ovivo, and Hellmutt the Badass from Hell. So be sure and hit that subscribe button so that you can join the awesome, the amazing Retro Wolf family. And let's talk about my impressions on these three games on the Nintendo Switch. First up, we're going to talk about Commander Keen in Keen Dreams. You can buy this game on the eShop right now for $9.99. Now, I have not played a Commander Keen game in a long, long time. So long that I barely remember the series or what it's even like, other than the fact that it's a very old school 2D platformer. Now, Commander Keen and Keen Dreams actually came out in 1991 on DOS, so it is a very old school 2D platformer, and you can definitely tell when you see the art style and the graphics of the game. It's very reminiscent of some of those old school 2D platformers from the early 90s PC era on the DOS. It's very nostalgic for me, even though, you know, 1991 when this game came out, I was like three years old because I was born in 88. But I did play games like this, like Commander Keen and other old school PC platformers a little bit later on when I was able to play games. I really enjoy these old school 2D platformers and Commander Keen in Keen Dreams definitely delivers on that nostalgia. It is a fairly difficult game. You really have to kind of take your time and learn the levels. Once you learn the levels, of course, you're going to get better and better at the game. The music is really nice. I really like those old school tunes from, from that era. And the game is, you know, it's pretty punishing. It's not very forgiving. You have, it's a weird game. You have like, you pick up this, these little dots and you, it, it, there's a counter at the top of the screen that looks like a flower and you throw these things at, at the enemies and it turns the enemies into a a plant with a, a long brown nose and then eventually they turn back into the enemies and it's weird it is a weird freaking game and and you don't have a life bar if you get hit one time by an enemy or fall into a, fit, a pit or hit a hazard you're gonna die you have a certain number of lives when you run out of lives you get a game over now one cool thing about this game is it actually had a world map it had a world map kind of similar to I guess you could say like Zelda 2 The Adventures of Link and you maneuver around this map going to all the different levels and you can kind of tackle some of the levels in any order you want and when the map opens up and gets a little more open-ended so if you find a level you're struggling with you can actually go back to the map go to a different level and try to tackle something that may be a little bit easier and also you can go to certain levels to try to stock up on your ammunition because you do have limited ammunition with your whatever your weapon is i don't really know what it's called so you got to be careful and you got to try not to miss the enemy so that you don't run out because if you run out in the middle of a level you're going to be in some trouble you can get you can find extra lives there's hidden areas and levels and secrets and if you get a certain score you'll get an extra life so there there is ways to buffer your lives in this game now the one cool thing about this particular package is that you can actually save your game at any time by pausing the game and going into the start menu and then you can pick that game right back up where you want to load it so i recommend if you play this game that if you have a if you do good in a level, save your game after that level, and then if you do bad in another level, reload your game. That way you can start with your lives intact. You don't want to get that game over screen because you'll have to start all the way from the beginning. So yeah, Commander Keen and Keen Dreams, it's a pretty fun old school 2D platformer from the early 90s. And if you're into that sort of thing and you have a lot of nostalgia for those games, or if you like the Commander Keen series, I recommend picking this one up on the Switch. Next up is Ovivo or Ovivo, however you want to pronounce it. I'm going to pronounce it Ovivo because I think that sounds pretty cool. Now this game is unlike anything I've ever played before. I can honestly say that I've never played a game like Ovivo. Let's start with the art direction and the graphics. It is entirely two colors, black and white. There are no variations to that. There are no different shades. 
the entire game is made in black and white. While that may sound very simplistic, and it is, it's done very effectively here, and there's a lot of beauty in that simplicity. So in this game, this game's kind of hard to describe. You'll kind of get a good idea of how it works by watching the gameplay. But in this game, you only have two buttons you use. Well, one button rather, the uh, A button, and then you use the control stick or the directional pad to move your little dot around. I don't even really know what it is. It's a very abstract game. There's not really any kind of story to it. But your goal in the game in each level is obviously to make it to the end of the level. Along the way, there are three symbols you can find and collect in the level, as well as other little dots you can find and collect in the level. So there are some collectibles which lead to, of course, replayability. Now, the one really unique thing about this game is how it plays. So you don't have a jump button. What the button does, the one button, is it enables you to switch from the black spots to the white spots in the level, the black areas to the white areas. So when you hold down the button, if you're falling, is if you hold down the button you'll transition into the other color and then if you keep if you pr release the button press it and hold it down again as you're falling again you'll transition back into the other color and you'll go back and forth so you can kind of use mo you use momentum in this game it's very momentum based so you use momentum and it's there's it's a very it's really hard to describe it's a very rhythmic momentum based uh, almost platformer I guess you could say so you got to use momentum you got to have rhythm with with how you press the button and of course you got to move your character around at just the right of time and when you do this effectively you kind of get into a flow a very smooth flow where you're just transitioning back and forth between black and white and it it's very satisfying there's something very satisfying about this game when you get into that flow the music is very simplistic it fits the game it fits the style of the game it's almost a it's a kind of a relaxing game for the most part now you can't there's no lives you don't have a life bar there's no game over if you fall you know all the way down the level whether it's up or down if you fall all the way you start over from like a checkpoint if you run into a spike or a hazard you'll start off at a checkpoint and a really cool thing about this game that i like more than anything is when you make it to the end of the level the camera zooms way out so that you see the entire level and it's almost like a work of art it really is it kind of reminds me of uh, you know one of those things they use i guess psychiatrists or psychologists use rorschach paintings or whatever where you're looking at this ink ink splotch trying to interpret it in some way it's it's very very unique and you'll see all sorts of patterns and designs in the level not only as you're progressing through the level but also when the camera pans out and you can see the entire thing. So it's a very unique game, and I forgot to mention the price. You can get it on the eShop for, I believe, $6.99. So it's a fairly cheap game, sort of a budget title. Now, I haven't beat it yet, so I don't know how long it is or how many levels there are. I can tell you there are at least seven levels, and there may even be more beyond that. But yeah, Ovivo, if you're looking for a very unique very abstract game that's simple yet challenging I recommend checking this game out and last but certainly not least is my favorite game of the three and that is Hellmutt the badass from hell pretty awesome name for a game right now I'm not gonna tell you the price yet we'll get to that at the end because there's a little caveat to this game that I'll explain in a little while but this game is really really awesome I would call it a roguelike twin stick shooter right but the game is really really difficult so you start off as like this little bobbing skeleton head looking thing and basically in the game you have a primary attack with your gun uh, you use one stick to move one stick to aim of course 360 degree just like any other twin stick shooter and then you have a special ability now what's cool about this game is you get transformations. So at the beginning of the game, at least from where I'm at, there's only two other transformations to choose from. And it's usually always this rat guy and this big, like, mutated, muscled up looking dude that throws act or throws hammers. So you can choose one of those transformations and you can swap back and forth between any transformations that 
you have acquired in that current run. So you can, at the beginning of the game, you can switch back and forth between whichever one of those two transformations you choose and the little skeleton head thing that you start off as. And as you progress through the game, through each level in the game, you will acquire even more transformations and you can swap around between them and they all have their own strengths and weaknesses like different speed, different main weapons, different special attacks. They'll have different HP levels. So it's really cool to discover a lot of the different transformations in the game and discover their strengths and weaknesses. Now, in addition to that, now let me tell you kind of how the game is structured. So it's a series of levels and I think at the end of every two levels, there's a big boss fight. The levels are structured kind of like an old school Zelda dungeon where you have different rooms. You move around the dungeon in the different rooms and stuff. And in each room, you're gonna have obstacles. You're gonna have enemies to fight, mini bosses, treasure chests to find, boxes and crates and jars to bust. And when you move in, when you move into a new room, all the enemies spawn in in that room and you gotta try to kill them all. Then you can open the treasure chests and get goodies. And the goodies include new guns that you can swap to with any of your transformations. You get med kits, you get coins that you can spend in a shop. And in the shop, you can buy stuff like med kits, more weapons, upgrade to your damage. You can buy armor. There's a lot of different stuff that you can buy to try to improve your run and make it easier and easier. And, there are, and so far what I've seen and granted, I've only beat the first two levels and I made it to the first boss. That's how hard this freaking game is. It's pretty brutal, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm seeing a lot of variation in the enemy types, so there's a lot of variety. The, uh, the graphics are really nice. I really like the pixel art in the game. It's really well done. The game has really nice music. So far, it's just, it's a really fun game and I am enjoying it quite a bit. I wish that it had a co-op mode. It's kind of a, kind of a bummer that it doesn't have a co-op mode. And as I said, the game is really hard. So if you don't like hard games, you may want to stay away from this one. One thing that I don't like about the game is most roguelikes, when you die at the end of a run, you get experience points or you unlock new things that make subsequent runs easier and easier, which allows you to get further and further into the game. So far, I'm not seeing that in this game. When you die in a run, that's it. You don't really unlock anything. You don't get any experience points. And you have to start the run over all the way from the beginning with no real advantage in the new run. And I don't like it when, when games like this do that. I like to feel like I'm constantly progressing even if I'm dying and losing runs over and over. Just like Dead Cells and The Binding of Isaac, you feel like you're constantly progressing and enter the gungeon. Games like that, you feel like you're constantly progressing. Not so much in this game, but despite that, I am having a lot of fun with the game. I like all the different transformations that you can find to add a lot of variety to the combat. I like the enemy variety. I like the gun variety. The boss fights are absolutely brutal. The music is great and the graphics are great. But let me get to the biggest negative of the game and why I cannot recommend that you purchase this game. And that's the price. This game on the Nintendo Switch eShop is $29.99. And to me, that is just grossly overpriced. I would not pay $29.99 for this game. Thankfully, I got a download code for it so I didn't actually have to buy it. But the publishers of this game should really take a step back and look at that price point because that is way too high for a game like this. There's just not enough to it to justify that price. It would be better if it was 20 bucks, but to me, the sweet price for this game, the sweet spot would be $14.99, $15. But $29.99, that's just way too much. And because of that, I can't recommend the game. Now, if you don't mind spending $29.99, $30, bucks, if you don't mind spending that, then by all means, go ahead and buy the game. It's a fun game, but the content of the game does not justify that steep price tag. So, you know, I would keep an eye out on maybe a sale for the game or a discount, or if you have some gold saved up on your Nintendo Switch Online account and you can bring the price down, but I just can't recommend it at that price. So there you have it, folks. 
three quick impressions on three Nintendo Switch eShop games that I've been playing over the last couple of days. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It, it really does help the channel out a lot and it only takes you literally a second to do so if you would like to join the retro wolf family and you have not done so already please be sure and smash that subscribe button and that will also help to keep you up to date on future videos i've got so much cool stuff planned for the channel that you're not going to want to miss a lot of really cool i feel quality content and i hope you do as well let me know in the comments down below if you have played any of these games and let me know what you think about them give me your impressions of the game in the comments down below I would love to hear from you or if you have any questions about the games feel free to drop those in the comments down below as well until next time keep playing games and having a good time and i will see you all in the next video later <laughs>